So now we are actually going to move on to our last two best paper candidates. Uh, both of these are remote, so they will be presented live, alas, remotely. Um, and uh, we, we are going to do the switch now. So the next paper is going to be presented by uh, Dr. Mustafa or Ahmed. So it is co-authored by Ahmed Shokri and Dr. Mustafa Youssef from the American University in Cairo. Uh, Dr. Mustafa Youssef actually gave the keynote here in 2018, well, not here in Chicago. Um, he is an ACM and IEEE fellow, and we are excited about uh, hearing about his paper about quantum communication. So um, just give us a second while we switch over to a remote. So um, I believe uh, Mr. Shokri, Shokri is going to be presenting. Can you please share your screen? OK, great. Um, Feel free to go into full screen mode. OK. And you can okay? share the camera if you wish. Uh, OK. OK. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Ahmed Shukri. I'm delighted to present our paper, A Quantum Algorithm for RF-Based Fingerprinting Localization Systems. The paper is co-authored by my advisor, Professor Mustafa Youssef from EUC and uh, Alexandria University, Egypt. We actually apologize for presenting virtually as we cannot get the visa on time. Okay. So the current state of location tracking systems is that GPS doesn't work indoors and propagation models do not provide good accuracy, especially indoors. Finally, fingerprinting systems can provide high accuracy in both indoors and outdoors environment. So as you know, fingerprinting techniques work in two phases. The first phase is the offline phase where we can look we collect the receive signal strength training vector from different access points or wireless devices in the environment at a different ground truth known location. Then in the online phase, um, user stands at unknown location scanning the receive signal strengths uh, from different access points in the environment. And we match the online user receive signal strength vector with the uh, uh, fingerprint at different uh, uh, locations and the closest location in the signal space is reported at the estimated location. So the problem in fingerprinting based localization is that it does not scale to a world wide scale. This of course because the data storage space overhead we cannot um, store huge vector at each of fingerprint locations and also the matching processing overhead. Okay, our contribution is that we uh, enable scaling fingerprinting based localization to a worldwide scale using quantum computing, uh, which in our case can provide an exponential saving in both space and uh, running time compared to uh, classical fingerprinting based localization. We evaluate our quantum algorithm in three real test beds. Uh, uh, that cover different scenarios indoor and outdoor using different technologies like Wi-Fi and cellular signal. And we deploy our quantum algorithm on real IBM quantum computer machine. Okay, we continue with a quick background on uh, uh, quantum computing. Then we discuss our quantum localization algorithm and compare the classical versus quantum complexity, show our results, and finally conclude uh, our work and present some future direction uh, in our field. So quantum computing is a new field at the intersection of physics, mathematics, and computer science. It leverages the phenomena of quantum mechanics. Uh, nowadays, several uh, academic and institutional uh, uh, institutions uh, claim the quantum supremacy. So one might expect that quantum computing would be the mainstream technology within a year. Uh, qubit is a basic unit of information, like the classical bit. Uh, 
qubits can have various physical implementations like polarization of photons or the span of electrons. Uh, qubit can exist in the superposition. This is uh, uh, unlike the classical bit. Qubit can exist in the superposition of both zero and one. So for example, this is state psi equal uh, alpha zero plus beta one. Uh, and the state of qubit is normalized in a way that alpha squared plus beta squared equal one. But when we try to measure a qubit, when we try to know its state, a qubit jumps to either zero or one. It jumps to zero with probability alpha squared and jumps to one with probability beta squared, losing both probability amplitudes alpha and beta. Okay, quantum gates is like Classical gates, operations on qubits are usually represented by gates. Gates can apply to a single qubit or a quantum register, which is a group of qubits, uh, leading to change the probability amplitudes, uh, which is always referred to as interference. Okay, the first gate is the NOT gate. It's like the classical NOT gate. It converts 0 to 1 and 1 to 0. It can uh, also work on um, a uh, superpositioning state alpha zero plus beta one to convert it to beta zero plus alpha one. Uh, the second gate is the Hadamard gate. It creates an equal superposition of both zero and one. So for example, if we fed, uh, if we feed zero to the Hadamard gate, we obtain um, uh, one over square root to zero plus one over square root to one. Uh, the, sec the third gate is the control swap gate. It swaps the two target qubits, psi and phi, if and only if the source qubit is one. And the quantum circuit is a combination of quantum gates. Single line uh, represents classical, uh, it represents quantum information, while double line after measurement represents uh, 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 classical information. The gates act on the input qubit to change the combined circuit state to the desired state. And the final step is to uh, measure the outcome of the system. And we obtain zero with probability uh, half and to obtain one with probability half. So one needs to uh, be careful when designing quantum algorithms because uh, its outcome is, uh, is random. OK. Our quantum localization, the input to our quantum localization algorithm, if the online receive signal strength vector uh, from different access points in the environment here by the user in the online phase, and uh, a set of offline receive signal strength vectors at different fingerprint locations. The first stage uh, in our algorithm is the uh, quantum state preparation, where we encode the online receive signal strength vector and the offline ones into quantum particles. Then we use quantum fingerprint matching circuit to uh, get the estimated location. OK, so uh, the, the target of quantum state preparation is to encode the receive signal strength vector coming from different access points in quantum uh, register. So for example, if we have a, a vector that uh, has four elements, alpha, beta, gamma, and eta. The quantum state preparation includes uh, this vector into quantum particles. So the quantum register state would be alpha zero zero plus beta zero one plus gamma one zero plus eta one one. Note the exponential saving where uh, we encode a, a vector of size four into just the two quantum particles. Uh, thanks for uh, qubits. And uh, we achieve this by using amplitude encoding. OK, the second stage is a quantum fingerprinting matching circuit. OK, the input to the circuit is a single qubit in state 1, uh, represents the Ancilla qubit, and a quantum register psi, which contains the online receive signal strength vector encoded in it. And uh, a fingerprint RSS vector from the fingerprint uh, uh, encoded in quantum register phi, and the target of the circuit is to calculate the cosine similarity between the online receive signal strength uh, uh, measurements in psi and the offline one in phi. Okay, so uh, one need, of course, to uh, repeat the circuit for each location in the fingerprint uh, to calculate the cosine similarity between psi and the each phi. 
okay, and then pick the location with the highest cosine similarity to be the uh, uh, estimated location. Okay, so the input uh, to our circuit is one sci-fi, and then we apply the first Hadamard gate, uh, which creates any uh, the superposition one over square root two zero sci-fi minus one over square root two uh, one sci-fi. Then we apply the uh, control swap gate, which exchanges the psi and phi uh, when the ancilla or the first qubit uh, is one. And then we apply the second qubit, the second Hadamard uh, gate, which converts the system state from this state to that state. And finally, we normalize the system uh, uh, state. And we know that the probability of getting one after measuring the ancilla qubit is a function in the required similarity, in the required cosine similarity. So after running the circuit for k times and measuring its outcome, the similarity will be uh, two times number of one after the measurement divided by number of repetition k minus one. Okay. So uh, now we will compare the classical versus quantum complexity. Okay, classical techniques uh, store uh, fingerprint at different M locations, which represents the fingerprint locations. Uh, each is storing a vector of size N that represents the receive signal strength coming from uh, uh, N access points or N reference points in the environment. Uh, hence, their space complexity is order MN. On the other hand, the proposed quantum localization algorithm uh, store, just like the classical techniques, store a fingerprint uh, at different M location. Uh, however, the N dimensional uh, receive signal strength vector is included in uh, log N quantum register, hence its space complexity is order M log N, which is an exponential saving in a, a number of access points in the environment. On the other hand, for time complexity, the classical techniques needs to compare a vector of size N here by the user in the online phase with a, a vector of size N stored at uh, each location in the fingerprint. Hence, its time complexity is order MN. On the other hand, the quantum, the proposed quantum algorithm uh, uh, compares log N quantum register uh, here the, on the online phase with the uh, ones stored at the fingerprint. Uh, hence, its uh, time complexity is order M log N, which is also uh, an exponential saving in, uh, in time. Okay, let's show our results. Uh, this is uh, our test bed. We actually implement our quantum algorithm uh, in three real test beds uh, that cover different scenarios indoor and outdoor using different technologies, Wi-Fi and cellular signal. And we deploy our quantum algorithm uh, on real uh, IBM machine, which is called uh, IBM uh, Quantum Santiago machine with five cubes. This figure shows uh, a topology of different qubits on the IBM Quantum Santiago machine. Vertex color represents the single uh, qubit gate error, like Hadamard gate, uh, while arc color represents the two qubit uh, gates error, example, uh, for example, the C0 gate, and vertical line represents the uh, measurement error. Okay, this figure shows the uh, effect of increasing a number of shots or number of iterations on the localization accuracy. Uh, as expected, increasing the number of iterations leads to uh, a better localization accuracy till it's saturated around 4096. Okay, this figure uh, compares the CDF uh, for the quantum versus classical localization. The figure confirms that uh, uh, quantum uh, uh, and the classical fingerprinting localization systems uh, have the same performance. Uh, however, note the exponential saving in both time and the space uh, due to the quantum uh, uh, fingerprinting system. Okay, this figure shows the uh, comparison between the uh, quantum and the classical complexity. The figure confirms that 
uh, using quantum parallelism, one can design uh, an algorithm that runs in order m log n instead of order n m due to the uh, classical algorithm. Uh, the size of fingerprint is also reduced from order n to order log n. And this complexity, which is uh, the happy point, is that uh, this complexity can be further enhanced to order log n m by including uh, all fingerprint location in one circuit, which is an approach that we are working on right now. Okay, let's conclude. We presented a quantum algorithm for fingerprinting matching in localization systems. Uh, our quantum algorithm can provide an exponential saving in both space and running time uh, uh, of the current fingerprinting localization system. We implemented our quantum algorithm on uh, physical IBM quantum experience machine, and we evaluated it in uh, three real test beds that covers different scenarios and different technologies. We also showed uh, that our quantum algorithm can be scaled to a larger test bed using simulation. The results confirm the advantages of the proposed quantum algorithm, which envisioning the future era of uh, location tracking uh, systems. This uh, list contains our future work. We are working on uh, enhancing the complexity of uh, our quantum algorithm to be log nm enhancement, and the way that would be great. And we are working on uh, different similarity measurement like Euclidean distance. Uh, and instead of uh, the cosine similarity, we are working on in this paper. And uh, we we use uh, different quantum spatial sensors, uh, quantum device free localization how to secure our localization system using quantum computing, and finally, quantum computing for other location determination uh, algorithms. Okay, thank you uh, for this. Thank you very much, Mr. Shoki. Thank you very much. Okay, questions from the audience? Okay, there's one question. Uh, I will ask specifically about the, uh, the graph that you show regarding the runtime, like where you had a comparison. I think that's a simulation, right? Where you compare uh, the running time complexity. Is that right? Uh, uh, not uh, actually, uh, I think you are talking about uh, yeah, this, this figure. Yes, that one. Is that a, did you actually measure anything on that or it's just a pred you are expecting no, no, it no, to be like no, this? No, actually, actually, um, uh, this figure shows the uh, uh, complexity uh, analysis between the classical versus quantum uh, complexity. Uh, one of the um, uh, obstacles that we are facing in uh, calculating the, run the actual running time is that when we try, uh, we run our quantum algorithm on real IBM uh, quantum computer machine. So uh, the time of running our algorithm on the real quantum computing machine includes uh, the queuing time and the networking time and so on. So we cannot actually get the actual running time of the circuit on uh, the real uh, IBM machine. However, this is of course a valid point. It would be great if we can uh, get the actual running time of running the circuit on the real machine. Thank you. Is, is that the, like why you can, I, I, I was interested in really showing the, like seeing the comparison in terms of uh, the running time in the real experiment. Like, but you're saying that we cannot see it right now because of the limitation on the machine or because you, of something, an update needed on your site. Okay. Uh, the point is that we implement our quantum algorithm on real machine. However, uh, this machine is on, on the cloud. It is cloud machine. So we need to uh, make the uh, connection to the remote machine and then uh, we upload our circuit on it and then get the response, uh, which is the answer to our algorithm. So uh, the actual running time, we cannot get the actual running time of running the circuit on the machine. We can get uh, uh, the total time of uh, uh, which, which includes the networking time and the queuing time uh, of the jobs of IBM quantum machine and the running time also. So okay. we cannot get just the running time, uh, the actual running time of the proposed the quantum algorithm on the real machine. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. So uh, 
So may, yeah. So we have one more question coming in from the floor. Uh, thank you for the, the nice uh, presentation, also the quality uh, contribution. I had a question regarding the circuit you chose to represent your uh, your uh, encoding with. Uh, were there other choices of encoding that you dismissed? Uh, why this particular representation? This would be the first question. And the second question would be, um, does the number of qubits of the quantum computing, uh, quantum computer uh, influence uh, your results. Okay, so the question is about uh, uh, the number of qubits we used in our experiment. If that's the question, I'm guessing it's four qubits, right? Our our quantum algorithm use uh, IBM Santiago machine with. Uh, five qubits. We use actually uh, this machine uh, uh, among the available ones as uh, we have uh, here in the first test bed, we have uh, just four uh, reference points or access points in the environment. So uh, if we have just four access points, we can encode uh, uh, the Ancilla qubit Plus, uh, we can encode the receive signal strength coming from the four uh, different access points into uh, uh, two qubits uh, uh, for training and two qubits for uh, testing. Uh, hence, we utilize uh, uh, all qubits of the IBM Quantum Santiago machine. So, so would you uh, say that if you had more qubits to work with, uh, maybe the results would be faster, or doesn't it doesn't influence? With five qubits, you mm, had enough. No, 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 no. Actually, actually, I think if we use uh, a quantum machine with more qubits than five, uh, I think the, the outcomes, the time of the, the running time actually is relevant of the number of qubits. Okay? And the second question is, was there a choice you made in terms of circuit representation of your, your, uh, your problem? Were there other kinds of representations that you could have chosen, but you chose this one? Uh, actually, um, we chose uh, this one, which is uh, known in the quantum world as uh, uh, this part actually is known as a uh, swap test, which uh, which is always calculates the similarity or the uh, the fidelity between the uh, two qubits. So this part called uh, swap test, which is known uh, circuit for uh, getting the similarity between uh, two qubits or in the quantum world. So we actually have a vision uh, uh, in, in deploying or using uh, the swap test in uh, getting the similarity in the, uh, uh, between the receive signal strength vectors. And uh, hence, we can uh, implement our quantum uh, localization algorithm. Thank you very much. Any other questions? So actually, uh, Ahmed, I have one more. I mean, uh, especially looking maybe towards future work uh, in continuation of this, uh, there's a couple of dimensions here because a lot of us are interested in how much actual time saving are we going to see using this uh, quantum um, you know, approach. Uh, so you said one of the limitations, for example, is you cannot measure the time because of the, you know, the network latency and the queuing that's going to happen at IBM Santiago and so on. So perhaps as even part of your implementation, you can add a simple timer before and after just to see the, um, you know, the completion time. Uh, because now you have, you know, your theoretical evaluation that you are able to achieve it in, oh, um, oh I guess, uh, uh, log of NM. Um, so it would be interesting to see that. Uh, but I guess my specific question in this implementation here, did you compare to some of the other non-quantum fingerprinting solutions that were presented in the literature? I mean, including uh, previous work by uh, Dr. Youssef, who also looked at fingerprinting in a non-quantum world. What are the major trade-offs there? Actually, um, um... 
Uh, here we, ca we uh, compare the, uh, actually in this figure, we compare the, uh, both the classical versus uh, quantum complexity and we need to make a fair comparison between the two uh, techniques. So for example, uh, here we uh, compare the classical version of the fingerprinting based localization versus the corresponding uh, quantum version of this, of the same system. Hence we can uh, show the uh, quantum supremacy in this case. And of course, uh, this is a valid point. We, uh, but, uh, but uh, the goal of this paper is to revisit the current state of uh, location tracking systems. And of course, in the future, we can uh, uh, develop uh, more uh, quantum algorithms uh, and uh, compare it with its uh, classical counterparts. Okay. Great, thank you very much. Thank you.